Hi everyone, today I'm going to teach you to play Tarocchino Bolognese, the traditional tarot game from the city of Bologna in Italy. This game, I'll warn you in advance, it can look kind of bewildering to a modern audience, but I promise it's not as difficult as it seems. And it is still played regularly by people in Bologna, and it's governed by the Accademia del Tarocchino Bolognese, who organize competitions and all sorts of stuff. So it is still a living game. There's different forms of it, but the game I'm going to show you is a four-player game with players in fixed partnerships. It's a trick-taking tarot game that also has a set collection element and a codified system of signalling. And someone from Bologna actually once I saw described it as the oldest and most complicated game in the world. I'm not sure that's technically correct, but it is a very old game and it is a pretty complicated game. Often when people say I want to play Tarocchino Bolognese, what they say is Ottocento, which means 800. Basically, it's the same as any other version of it, um, just that the end point is you play until one of the partners gets to 800 points. Uh, another way that you can play it though is Quattro Scattate, which is four hands. And so you play four hands and then you add up your score from that, or you play Ottocento, which is up to 800, or you play Milone, which is, just means that you're playing up to 1,000 points. Um, there is also a two-player version of this, which people tend to call Milone, because you also play it to 1,000 points. Um, but the two-player version is a little bit different. I'll talk about that another time. Essentially, though, we're talking about the four-player game, and all of these versions work the same. It's just that the end point is different. For this game, you're really going to need the traditional Bolognese deck. I've got another video showing you this deck in a bit more detail, but I'll give you a really quick overview of it now so you understand when you're playing the game. The deck is called the Tarocco Bolognese. People call it the Tarocchino Little Tarocco because it only has 62 cards instead of a full 78 card tarot deck. A lot of beginners get a bit scared off because most of the cards in it aren't labelled, as you'll see. So you just have to learn to recognise everything visually. And it's an Italian suited deck, which means that it has four suits of coins. Left to right, that's 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Cups. Left to right, that's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Sorry, I wasn't consistent. Swords, which are curved. Left to right, those are 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then batons, which are straight. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 from left to right. Each of these suits also has an ace, a jack, a knight, a queen, and a king also. These are the ace, jack, knight, queen, king of coins. Ace, jack, knight, queen, king of cups. Ace, jack, knight, queen, king of swords. And the ace, jack, knight, queen, and king of batons. You've then got a super suit or like a fifth suit of the trump cards. On the left is trump zero, the begato. This is the pagat or magician in other decks that you might know. On the right is the fool, il matto in Italian. Trumps one, two, three, and four are the four mores. They're actually of equal value in this game, but essentially they're the bottom four trumps. From here on they're numbered. So here's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 and 13, 14, 15, and 16. Then you've got the moon, the sun, the world, and the angel. Those ones aren't numbered, so you just have to recognize them. In terms of how the suits work, in traditional tarot games, the long suits, swords and batons, have the cards ranked normally, for the lack of a better word, ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, knight, queen, and king. So the ace is just the one. But then, in the round suits, coins and cups, the pip cards are ranked backwards. So, 10 is low and ace is high. So, from low to high, it goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, ace. And then, jack, knight, queen, and king. You remember how I said that this is the tarokino, the little taroko, because they take out some of the cards. All of the suits have the 2, 3, 4, 5 removed. But... They keep the order. So in Tarocchino Bolognese, the long suits go ace, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, knight, queen, king, going from low to high. Whereas the round suits, coins and cups, go from low to high, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, ace, jack, knight, queen, king. A little bit confusing at first, but you get used to it because this is something that's in a lot of these traditional tarot games. 
Then you've got the trump sequence. From the top down, the highest trump is the angel, which is 20. The world is second highest. The sun is 18, third highest. The moon is the next highest. And then the numbered ones are just the number that's on them. And then you've got the four mores, which are one, two, three, four, but are all actually the same rank. Then the bigger tool, which is basically trump zero. The fool is not numbered. I'll explain when we watch a bit of the footage from an actual game how the fool works. This game footage was made on onlinecardgames.co.uk, which is the only place to play this game online, at least easily, and this is the one that the Accademia del Tarocchino Bolognese in Italy used for their games and their online tournaments as well. Okay, so let's actually watch someone playing a game. On this one, I'm at the bottom, R and R, and then my partner is Kel I, who is at the top there, sitting directly opposite me. On the left, we have Martin, and on the right, we have Mike. Those two are also a partnership, they're our opponents. Now, in this deal, Kel is dealing. He's got the little SC next to his name, which is uh, the Scattatore, which is the dealer. He deals out five cards to each of us, three times over so that we all have 15 cards he as a dealer will still have two cards left over puts them all together so he's got 17 cards in his hand and chooses two of them that he's going to discard they're going to count to our tricks martin there being the player immediately after the dealer has the first lead he has led trump number nine and in doing so wrapped his knuckles on the table that's what that b means there now before i play I'm also going to lay down a couple of cards on the table, being the King of Coins, the Knight of Coins, and also the bigger tool there. I'm going to explain later actually what that means, but anyway, just so that you know that I did that. Now, Martin led trumps, that means I have to follow suit with trumps. I played trump 6, Mike played trump 15, so he's winning this trick, he's played the highest card so far. Kel played the Sun, so because Kel has played the highest card in the trick, we won that. He gathers up the cards and then he leads the next trick. He has played the Ace of Cups. That means I have to follow suit. I have the King of Cups. Everyone else has played a cup. What's Mike gonna do? He plays a cup too. I've won that trick, so I gather it in. I have then led Swords. So I lead the Ten of Swords. Mike has followed suit with the Ace of Swords. Kel, what's he gonna do? He has played the King of Swords. Martin has played the six, so Kel has won that one. Kel leads swords back at us, so he plays the eight of swords. Martin has followed suit with the jack of swords. I don't have any swords, which means I have to play a trump. In this game, if you can't follow suit with a regular suit, you must play a trump if you can. So I lead the ace of clubs, Mike has played the jack of clubs, Kel plays the six of clubs, Martin wins that trick, king of clubs. Martin leads a trump, I play the moon, Kel has played the more, so I won that trick with the highest trump in it. I played clubs again. Mike plays the knight of clubs following suit. Kel plays one of the moors. He's thrown on a trump there. Oh, Martin has another more. If you play two moors to the same trick, the second one wins. Now, I need to try and save the bigger tool there. I have to make sure that uh, Kel wins in a trick. I'm going to risk it now. So Martin's played a low trump. And then Kel has the highest trump there, that's good. We have collected one more of the moors and we have kept the bigger tool. Kel leads cups this time. I don't have any cups. I have to play a trump and my only remaining trump is the world. I really hope Mike doesn't have the angel, otherwise he would take the world off me, which would be not good. Anyways, I lead clubs again. See what Mike does. Does he have any clubs? He does not and he has played the queen of coins. Hoping, I guess, that Martin is going to win this trick. So, Kel has played Trump 5, Martin has played Trump 14. So, Martin did win that trick and catch the Queen of Coins that his partner had played. So, he leads the Knight of Swords. I'm going to play the Queen of Clubs there and we will see what my partner can do. I can't win that trick, I don't have any Trumps left. Mike has the Queen of Swords and has won that trick. Looks like everyone is out of Trumps now unless Martin has some. Mike has dropped a sword from a great height. That's what the V means, it means he dropped the card. Um, Kel, what's Kel gonna do? Because I'm not gonna be able to win this trick. Well, Kel has played the fool. 
The fool means that you don't have to follow suit. You can play it at any time. It will never win the trick, but it means you don't have to follow suit. And you get to keep it. Martin plays Trump 16. He won that. He has led the Jack of Coins. I can win that because I've got the King of Coins. And then knowing that the Queen of Coins is already long gone, I could play the Knight of Coins. And then, unless someone trumps it, I will win this. Martin might trump it, though. No, he didn't. He had to follow suit. That's great. I get to keep it. The last one, I played clubs. Uh, Mike played the six of coins. That was all our last ones. And Martin had the angel in the very last trick, so Martin wins the last one. Now what happens is, sitting at a table, we would lay out all of our cards and add up how many points we have. At this point, it gets kind of complicated. What's good about this web website, one of the many things that's good about it, is this does all the maths for you. I'll now explain to you actually how the scoring works and how you would do it at a table. What sets Tarokino Bolognese apart from basically every other tarot game is that this is a set collection game. You play the tricks like a normal tarot game, but when you win the tricks, you gather in all of your cards afterwards and you look at what sets of cards you have to score with. Each of these scoring combinations is scored at the end of each hand using the cards that you and your partner won in your tricks. However, you can also declare them if you already have some of these combinations in your starting hand. So before you lead to your first trick, you declare what you've got, show the cards to the other people at the table, and you get those points. However, you don't have to, that's always optional, and it might not even be a good idea because sometimes you don't want to give away that information. Even though you get some points for it, might be better not to let your opponents know that. You've got two kinds of combinations that you're looking for. First of all, the cricket, which are just straight up combinations of the same kind of card. Either you have all four in a set or you have any three in a set. And the first kind of card you're looking for are the taroki, um, which are the most valuable. And these are the angel and the world, the two top trumps, and also the begato and the fool. And if you get all four of those between you and your partner, then you get 36 points. If you have any uh, three of them, you'll get 18 points. And then the next are basically, do you have three or all four of the kings? Do you have three or all four of the queens? Do you have three or all four of the knights? And do you have three or all four of the jacks? Now, out of any of those, if you have uh, three or more of any of those sets, then your score for the cricket gets doubled. So even more important than um, just winning card points like normal tarot games, you want to get these, uh, these combinations. And then you've also got sequences that are worth points. And these are, for example, the grande, the big sequence, which is basically having the top trumps and then a sequence down from there. Having a suit sequence, which means you have the king of a suit and then the queen, knight, jack, and so on. Having the moors, having all four of the moors, and having all four of the aces. Now, I say all four. You actually don't need all four of them, and I'll get to something here in a second. But basically, that means there are seven sequences you can get. There is a trump sequence you can score. There is the sequence for the moors, the sequence for the aces, and then each of the four suits. And again, if you have three or more sequences, you're going to double your score for this. Having a three-card sequence in any of those will be worth 10 points, and then for each additional card in any given sequence, you're going to add another five points. So let's talk a bit more about these sequences. It's a little bit tricky. I'm going to post this whole thing as a separate video so you can rewatch it later if you want as well. Firstly, something important with the sequences is that the Begator and the Fool can act as wild cards to replace other cards in sequences, which makes them super valuable. The Italian name they use for them to call them the wild cards is the Contatori. The first sequence we're looking at is the Grande, the Trump sequence. Now, it starts with the angel, and it has to have the angel. Then it needs at least two out of the next three. Once you've got the angel and at least two out of the next three, you've established your, your three-card sequence for uh, ten points. Now, the bigotor and the fool can act as wild cards, replacing any of those three, the world, the sun, and the moon. They can't replace the angel, but they can replace any of those three. Here's an example. So we've established our grande sequence because you've got the angel, the world, and then the begator, which is replacing one of either the moon or the sun to establish a three-card sequence. And from there, we can add more cards. 
So the sequence of three cards is 10, plus another five points for having the 16. And then another five points for each card you can add to the sequence going down. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, all the way down the bottom. Each extra card in the sequence is another five points. Now here's another example. So we've got the angel, the world, and the moon to establish the sequence, 10 points, and we've got the 16, so that's now up to 15 points. Now you could replace either the world or the moon in that sequence with one of the contatori, so let's put in the full, and then the sequence keeps going, and we can use the other contatori to fill one of the gaps in the sequence going down. So you've got 10 points for the three cards that start the sequence, and then five points for each of the other ones there, which is another five of them. So this sequence is worth 35 points. In this example, we've got all four of the top ones. So we've got the angel world, the sun, and the moon. And then we're going to add on the 16, and we've got the two contatori. So that is also totally fine, but it has to stop there. I couldn't add the 13, because once you've got two contatori, the two wild cards in a row, that stops the sequence. This sequence would score 30 points. You've got 10 points for the first three of them, and then five points for each additional. So 10 plus four plus the first three uh, equals 30 points. Here's another example though. I've got the two contatori, so I can use one of them to establish the sequence with the top three there, so angel, world, and then the bigger tool, but I don't have the 16. So I've used the full to be the 16, but that means the sequence stops there. Technically, I've got the two contatori uh, one after the other consecutively because one is replacing either the sun or the moon and one's replacing the 16. So that's only a four card sequence. I can't add the 15. It would be fine in a different arrangement though. If we look at this one, I've used one wild card to replace the world and then I've got the actual sun and then I use the other wild card to replace the 16. That's okay because they're not next to each other in the sequence. And so now I can add the 15 and the 14 and so on. This would be a six card sequence worth 25 points, 10 points for the first three, five points for each of the remainder. The rest of the sequences are a lot easier to get your head around. So the more sequence is basically just having at least three of the mores, at least two of which uh, have to be real. So two mores and one of the wild cards would count as a three card sequence. So what you see here would count as a three card sequence, 10 points. Every extra more or wild card you added onto that would be another five points. So now we're up to 15, then we got 20, then we got 25. You can have six mores, even though there's only four mores in the deck. The aces sequence works the same as the mores sequence. You need at least three, of which two have to actually be aces. You can only ha you have to have two aces and one wild card. You can't have one ace and two wild cards and call that a sequence. So here are your four aces again, and there are the two wilds. That would be a six ace sequence if you had all of them. This would be a basic aces sequence of 10 points. This would also be an aces sequence of 10 points. It's okay to have one wild. This would be a four ace sequence of 15 points. As would this. This would be a five ace sequence of 20 points. And then 25 points if you had all six. For a suit sequence, you need the king of the suit, and that cannot be substituted by a wild card. And then you need at least two out of the next three, the queen, the knight, and the jack, at least one of which has to be real. You can't substitute a king and the two wild cards and call that a sequence. Once the sequence is established uh, for 10 points with three cards minimum, you can then add an ace. So here we've got a suit sequence in batons, because you've got the king, the queen, and one of the wild cards. And then you've added the ace to make a four card sequence, 15 points. If you also added the jack, you'd have a five card sequence, 20 points. The suit sequences can even go up to seven. Here I've got the king of cups and the queen and the knight and the jack and the ace of cups and both of the wild cards. So I've got the first three to establish the sequence, plus an extra four at five points each, adds up to 30 points for a seven card suit sequence. 
like a normal tarot game, you do still count your card points, and these will be familiar to you if you've played almost any other kind of tarot game. I'm going to show you a simple way to count the card points, which you're not going to have to do any maths for, which is basically the Todoki, the four most important trump cards are going to be worth 4.5 points each, as are the kings. The queens are worth 3.5, knights are worth 2.5, the jacks are worth 1.5, everything else is worth half a point. There's actually a slightly more traditional way to look at it, which is actually that the Taroki and the Kings are worth five points, the Queens are four, the Knights are three, the Jacks are two, um, but you have to count each of them with a, which, with a, one of the spare cards, with one of the, the, um, the regular cards. But if you do it this way, then you can just do it a simple edition, the same as like how they often do it in French tarot, just to make it easier for you. Also, you get uh, six points for winning the last trick. Tron Sigurdsson, who I interviewed once before, has made this really great score sheet so you can actually see everything as a nice table like that. I might link that in the show notes. Okay, so let's continue on from where we left off in this actual game that we were playing online. So on to the next hand here. So the dealer is now Martin. It goes anti-clockwise, the same as the play. And that means that I'm going to lead to the first trick. So once Martin has worked out which two cards he's going to discard uh, as the dealer into his into his team's trick pile, then I will lead the first trick. Okay, now before I lead to the first trick, or before anyone leads to their first trick, they can make a declaration if they have one of these combinations. I don't, so I'm not going to. Uh, what am I going to lead with? And if I want, I could use one of the signals. There's B, which is knock on the table, V, which is when you let the card drop, and S, when you scrape the card across the table before playing it. Eventually, I decide to lead with the Ten of Coins. Mike is going to follow suit with coins. He played the King of Coins. Can Kel trump that? That would be awesome if he did. Kel, before he plays though, he declares that he has three knights, so he lays three knights out on the table so he can get some points for those. Unfortunately, he had to follow suit with coins, so we're not going to get that King of Coins. What does Martin have? Martin has a more. He does not have any coins. So he has collected that trick, and he's got one of the moors there. And he will lead the next trick. And he leads the Ten of Cups. That means I have to follow with cups. I'll play the King, hoping to win this trick, hoping that Mike has a cup and has to follow suit. He did, so I win that. Kel played the Knight of Cups, so that's two of the court cards in cups we've got. That's very good. Might get a suit sequence out of that. Um, I'm going to play the Nine of Coins. So far, everyone has had to follow suit. Martin, uh, though, has to trumpet because he didn't have any coins. Leads the Ace of Cups. So we follow suit with Cups. At the moment, Martin's winning it. Let's see if Mike has uh, the Queen of Cups. So he's going to win this one so far. Unless Kel's got the King, or maybe Kel can trumpet. Kel has trumped it with Trump number five. Because remember, if you can't follow suit, you must play a trump. Kel plays the nine of clubs. Martin plays the queen of clubs. Oop, I made a mistake there. Clicked on the wrong card. Oh, sorry. He played the king and I played the queen. So Martin wins that one. Now what's Martin going to do? He plays trump 13. I have to follow with another trump. Now, I've got to work out a, a trick where I can save that bigger tour again. I want to make sure Kel wins the trick that the bigger tour is in. Anyway, I follow with Trump 8, Mike with Trump 9. Can, is Kel going to take this trick? Yes, he plays the moon. So we've got the moon in our tricks. Might be useful for a Trump sequence. I play the bigger tour and hope, yes, Mike had batons as well. He had to follow suit. That means I have won that trick and I have saved the bigger tour. All right, play the eight of swords. Mike, I think we'll have to follow suit with swords. No, he has played a moor. It looks like these guys are going to catch at least three, maybe all of the moors. Okay, and they've got the, the king of swords there as well. So that's a valuable trick for them. So Mike plays the six of coins. Kel plays the trump six because he doesn't have any coins. Martin has played the sun. He played a very high trump. Should I play the world here and gather this in? No, I 
for some reason, played... Oh, of course, I had to follow suit with coins. I'm not paying attention here, clearly. So I played the Ace of Coins, had to follow suit with coins. Batons is played. I'm going to trump that, because I have to. Mike has also trumped it. Oh, maybe I should have won that trick, but maybe Mike's got the Angel, and then that would not be good, because I don't want him to get the world off me. Mike plays the Six of Cups, and he did a Scrape. Ah, Kel's played the Fool. He doesn't want to follow suit with Cups. Martin trumps it. Look, I'm going to play the world on this one. I'm going to cash that one in, make sure it's safe and that the Angel doesn't steal it. I play the Ace of Swords. Mike plays another more. I think that's all four of them now. Yeah, and then Martin's played the Queen of Swords as well. So those are some valuable cards. I think they're going to beat us on this hand just quietly. Uh, I win that one, but... It may not matter much in the long run. We've got the Jack of Swords. I lead. Mike's trumped it. Mike's got that one. Mike plays the Angel in the last trick. So it's good I didn't play the world before because he would have stolen it off me. Now they have made 301 points on this hand, whereas Kel and I have only made 105. So they did do quite well out of this one. That table there on the right has shown all of the sequences and all of the clique and all of the card points and everything. So it did all the maths for us. Very convenient. So that's all for this episode. There's a lot to this game, but at least that gives you an overview. If you want to find out more, you can always go to pagart.com to find rules about every card game that has ever existed, pretty much. You can drop me an email on learntarotcardgames at gmail.com, and I can send you a link to join the traditional card games Discord so you can meet other people who are into this kind of thing and even practice some games with us. If you want to contact the Academia del Tarokino Bolognese, tarokinobolognese.it, and if you want to play online, onlinecardgames.co.uk is the best place to try this game out. Okay, thanks.